Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Wow. Please don't do that again. Good morning, everybody. Shalom Aleichem. I gave share last night, but most of you weren't there. It's great to be back. You are. But um, I still have this safari bugging me. Last time I went to safari, it was like, it was three years ago. It was before, bro- so the entire brachas, everybody suffered. I don't know if you remember. Every daf had to do with the safari. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to continue that, that theme. It's going to be months. Every day you're going to see pictures and stories. Welcome back to Eretz HaKodesh. Regards from Argentina. I hope you had a smooth journey back and I hope you really regenerate charge with the daf. I know you get 40 plus email. I look back, it's been 10 months since my last email. This is from... Oi, I forgot his first name. Mitz, 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 Mendel Mitz, I think. Mendel, yeah. I just wanted to drop you a quick physical email, especially if you found in distant places like Argentina or any exotic place around the world. I was reminded to do so, as you mentioned, Argentina is an example of a place that someone may, may have a long lost relative who may care and it may ruin the family's reputation if they hear that their distant relative is seduced on DAF 41. Argentina is not a place that gets much attention or mention, so thanks for the shout out. I just want to let you know that I'm still with you since Brochas DAF Bays. Keep up the amazing work, encouraging Chesed Achdos without making differences between the different groups of Yidin. As you mentioned again, recently looking forward to finishing Shas Cotton with you as well as Shas Godol. With everyone in MDY, your devoted talent from Buenos Aires, Argentina, Mendel Mitt. This is from Rich Marinelli. Love the name. Good morning, Rabbi Sai from Chachmi Lubin in Poland. My son Mickey is on a trip to Poland with the Hillel of Rockland Community College led by Rabbi Oliver. His grandma is the only family survivor from Lodz Ghetto. They are visiting the camps in important Jewish. Uh, sites. My son and I both learned the daf of the Ravelli and discuss it regularly. It has enhanced our relationship. You hear this, Rabbi Yisai? We hear this over and over. A lot of times, father, child, like Donnie, how's your relationship with your father these days? That's unbelievable since they started doing the daf with you. It has enhanced our relationship with it. I'm with MDY since Megillah and he joined the Yevamot. Thank you, Rich Marinelli. Here he is, Rabbi Yisai, volume. Good. Shkoyach, no value. <laughs> you got volume? No. No. Okay. How about this one? You're going to be able to hear this one? Something's wrong with the new system. Last night we got it going. Remy was able to do it. He had a problem in the first few seconds, but then he figured it out. You want to try? Attaches my bunk saying good morning, Rabbi Say ah, at our barbecue. Thank you, Yiddish Schwartz. Here it goes on mute. Good morning, Rabbi Let's see about this one. Oh, we need volume because there's some notes. Good morning, Rabbi Say ah. Wow, it's kind of echoing in there. Rabbi Say, here it goes from South Africa. The way it works over there, I, so I was in a, I paid a guy a lot of money to take me into a really interesting neighborhood. And we saw things there that it's unbelievable, the, the poverty. So here's a guy with a sewing machine, but obviously there's no electric there, so he's doing it by hand. And uh, you'll see like a little hut in the middle of the street, and people come by and give him the clothes. He's a tailor. This, this is what the Gemara was saying yesterday, the other day. This is an Eved who's like if Margoliois, and there's an Evid that's a tailor. Here's uh, the other one. Okay, here goes. I need both, you ready? One, two, one, two. Good morning, Rabosai. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. And here, we're going back to the Safari. I took, the, uh, I'm only showing pictures that I took here. Is a picture of a baboon. What is it? A baboon. Baboon. Drinking water right next to the place that we stayed by, by the water hole. I also took this picture. I was literally five, five to ten feet away from this guy. You guys didn't see this picture yet? You didn't show this one? That's a part of a zebra. What's left over from a zebra. We watched him eat it and then he was 
kind of happy and uh, take a rest. A boy said the coil of is sponsored anonymously for all the new people that joined. We just started volume two of Art Scroll, and it's still not too late to bring in your friends and start the new volume. And you can get a volume yourself. Your friend can get one. Paradise Achoyish for the Koyl, Avi and Rachel Kamiansky, in memory of Rachel's mother, Rachel Gittel, Rachel Gittel, Bas Esther, Rita should be a Melitzi, Shara, on behalf of us and our children. The Mesechta sponsor, Lili Nishmas, Ara Moshe Ben Baruch Yosef, and Lili Nishmas, Shalom Nata Ben Elaz and Moshe, for that's Lachal Bechal and Yenavim and children. The second sponsor, Jeff Rosner, and Schuss, my son, is of Simcha Chaim Ben Sar Khan, or Fush Neymar. Paras Achoyish number one, by the Lach and Lebevuk families, Lake New Jersey, because Tari's best gula. Paras Achoyish number two, Moshe Ben Zachariah, or Zachariah Ben Moshe. Zechariah ben Moshe. Parents of Chodesh number three, Benji and Essie Israel, and family in memory of our Zayd and Moshe Menorah, three cousins, Sarkli, Ricky, and Racheli, Menorah, on their 12th yard side, the Roshamans should all have an aliyah. Parents of Chodesh number four, Dr. Avram Epstein, in memory of my precious Southern Belle, wife, mother, and grandmother, Rita Gay Epstein. Parents of Chodesh number five, Michael Ben Mela, Mati Peril, and Arnerj, to be Zoycha, to make it to Umar Rosh Hashanah this year. Parents Ha Yoim. By Moshe Katz, Lawrence, New York, before Shlemet to my baby brother, Yisrael ben Chaya Hatzadekis. Parnas Hayoy number two, Tzvi King, in loving memory of Daniel Faivish ben Yaakov Yitzchok, Danny King, all of us Number three, uh, Esther Basara for Shidduch Bekaroi, and wow, this is messed up. Yeah, Rachel Brino Bas Leo, before Shlemet, Miriam Leo Basara. Therefore, Shlema, on my screen, the Shin is in the beginning of the sentence. The Lamed Reish Peivov is at the end. Brackets it in somewhere. Somebody just wrote me, I think it was Nechemio or Mordechai Seltzer, that they have an Eitzah for this. Moshe has his, oh, you have an Eitzah, good. Let's, let's get, get on it. Or just write the whole thing in English, in honor, or the whole thing in Hebrew. In honor of, this, of his amazing wife. Again, Moshe has his, in honor of his amazing wife, Abigail, for promoting his learning Hashtag Torah is the best segula. Copyrighted. Copyrighted. All right, Raboisa, here we go. We are holding the Mem Gimel Omer Aleph. Six lines down. Nusogya. Boy minei Reb Avino Mirav Sheshes. You got it? Six lines down. Mem Gimel Omer Aleph. Bas hani zoynes mino achin. Maisi yodel limi. So, as you can see in chart number one. Benon Nukvan, it says in the Ksuba, the Yehavan Lichi Minoi, Inun Yehoi Nyasmim Habesi, you promise in your Ksuba that after the father goes bye bye, the daughters will remain in the house. We're not going to kick them out of the house. Umidzanan Minachosai, and they're going to have Mizoinus from my whatever I leave over to Yerusha, add the Tilkechun Guvrin until. What happened? Who? Who? Yeah. Oh, okay. Fine. I just I'm, I took it straight out of Rashi. This lesson. Great. Um. So he's mechayev himself to give mezaynas to his daughter. Now, I forgot to, to welcome the guest. Shalom Aleichem. I'm not used to this. I'm in Africa. I wasn't welcoming any chayas. But Shalom Aleichem. Where are you from? No, no. Not to compare. Okay. <laughs> sugar. You're such a man sugar. <laughs> Stefanski. <laughs> I'm sitting there by myself in a, guy, in, a, in a guy's dining room. He's not even home. He said, uh, Tomer's uh, brother said, using my house. There's two, two dogs there and me. I'm giving a shear. So I'm not used to saying Shalom Aleichem to people. That's what I meant. Not, I'm not coming. Okay, now I'm not going to him. Who else is here? Oh, Shalom Aleichem. What's your name? Dave Sharif. Dave Sharif from? Gimel. Gimel. Yesterday we had Gimel. Today on Moshe Hirsch is from Gimel also. Now I'm going back to you. Tzadik, where are you from? Where? Private. private. It's private. private. Where's that? Private. Where's that located? Private. Private. Shine. Right. Okay, we're not going to bother the new guest. Okay. We'll go weiter. Don't, don't zoom in on him. What are you doing? He's private. <laughs> so the question is like this. Now, 
the father dies and the sons jump in and they take over. They inherit all the Nechassim, they have Yerusha, and they mefarnas the girls. Now, are they, do they step in completely instead of the father? Well, there's a trade-off. If the girl, the daughter works, so all her salary goes to her father, so too her salary should go to her brothers because the brothers are stepping in instead of the father and they're being with father, sir. So therefore they're entitled to her salary. Or perhaps they're not similar to the father. She's not using up the brother's wealth. What she's taking is what she deserves already from the ksuba that the father promised. So it's, it's the father's nechassim, not the kid's nechassim. We learned it. It says in the ksuba, that's another thing that it says in the Ksuba, that you, the Almana, in chart two, if you want to show it, the Almana also gets, gets Mizaynas, she gets support after her husband dies. From what? From the Nechassim. So Tenisua, we can make a comparison between a daughter and an almana who are both in the Ksuba. Almana and Izzari Zminik say Yisrael Mimim Aisei Adi Ashalahed. The almana, it's a little bit of a chutzpah here, but that's how it is. I shouldn't say chutzpah, but that's how it seems a little rough. The mother, you give your mother some food and you take her salary. She's a, she's a lawyer, whatever it is. You take her salary, you give her parnasa, you give her food and you take her salary. That's how it goes. So Memela, by the daughter as well, the, the brothers are going to give her mezainas and they're going to take her salary. They do it to the mother, they do it to the daughter. Why not? Maybe the women shouldn't listen to this, whoever's listening to this shir, if there are any. The father, when it comes to an almana, he doesn't want her to, to make a to make, uh, profit. He wants his daughter to be wealthy. He doesn't, want, he doesn't care about his wife being wealthy or not. Why? What's the, uh, what's the svara? Because when his daughter's in Shiduchim, the daughter who has more money, if she comes with Nechassim, she'll have more people that are interested in her. So he's interested that she should make money, but not the, not the wife. So it's different. You can't bring a riot from a mana. So what are you telling me? What do you want to tell me that a, that a father... He cares about his daughter more than he cares about his wife. Well, we have a right against that. Why? Because it says, if a father leaves very few belongings, less than 12 months worth of survival, in that case, what happens is, you tell the boys, go out and knock on doors. Meanwhile, the daughters, they stay home and they take from the Nuchasim Muatim. Afalmona, it's al Abbas. Almona, it's Zainas. Abbas, it's al Absachim. So, when it comes to Almona versus a daughter, if you have two things, you have, you have enough to support the, the, the widow, you have enough to support the daughter, the Allah is that the Almana gets the money, she gets to benefit from whatever he left over, the little that he left over, and the daughter has to go knocking on doors. So now if I ask you, who's more important? It seems like the, the wife is more important. She gets to stay at home, while the daughters have to go knocking on doors. So again, I, okay, back to the safari, just brought something to mind, seriously, not when I was learning. Now, over there, they, they, they have a minug, Nobody falls for it, but they have a minute that the mother goes out and they, they, they take a two-year-old along in the middle of the street in the heat all day long. So you should have Rahmaz on them that they have two-year-olds. They don't go, like the homeless in America, they collect in this corner, or where they bring their kids with them. So, and so, what? They don't have anywhere to put them. It's not even a joke. Their homes there, I said last night, is the size of, the Gemara talks about it, Arba al Arba, literally. It's from where Benny's sitting, this little thing made out of metal shack. It's a noir volume. 
There are millions and millions of people like that. The, the whole neighborhood is like that. Teaching the business. Teaching the business. Malam do yomna said two. Even like uh, sometimes it's less than two, but it's like you bring uh, the kid to the to, to yeshiva to hear the Torah. So to, yeah, I hear. They hire those children. What, you think they don't have their own children? You think they have money to hire children? Oh, uh, you're from South Africa. What are you making up stories? It's their children. They have 20 more. Please. Okay. They hire these children. Amon and his eyes of So so again, you see the Amana stays home, the, the older woman stays home, the younger kid goes knocking on doors. Says Gemara, not a right. The husband doesn't want his wife to be embarrassed knocking on doors, so therefore the daughter should. However, the Sfar that we said before, but who should make money, who should have money in their account, again, because of Shiduchim, he wants his daughter to, to be Marviach, but not the wife. Mosiv Rav Yosef. So remember this name for now. Rav Yosef, the famous Rav Yosef, the one who's Abayi and Rav is Rebbe. He has the cash. It says in our Mishnah, right? The Maisi Yodayim and her Metziah. The girl, her salary, and if she finds something, if the father dies, even though she didn't collect her salary, if the father dies, you hear what's going on here? She is owed a salary. She works in some sort of, uh, I don't want to say, the certain institutions that don't really pay the rabbeim. Whatever, she works in one of these places. Six months later, they owe her all this money. The father dies first. Since the father was entitled to all that money, so it goes to the brothers. Sounds harsh. It goes to the brothers because the brothers, Yarshin, any Chayiv, but this is to the father. It seems like, oh, we have a good raya. The salary goes to the brothers. Why? Because the father is entitled to it. But if the father is already dead, he's not entitled to it, so it goes to herself. So you see that her mice and go to herself and not to the brothers. My love, in his even in a case, where she's getting his from the brothers. Talking about a case where. She's not receiving any mezayinus, and that's why it goes to herself. I'll take my, I'll take my salary. I don't need your bread. I'll, I'll be mistader by myself. Says Gemara, Ibshin in mezayinus, my lememro. What's the chiddush? Of course she gets it. Why? You work for me, but I'm not going to give you anything. This is, this is such a mandoma that says you can tell your eved, your slave, I'm not a slave. You can tell your, like we said, Rashi said yesterday, the slave is like a donkey, and if you knock out the donkey's tooth, the donkey doesn't go out. You can tell your donkey, I want you to work. I'm not going to feed you today. The donkey can't say anything. So even according to the Madama, says you can say that to Neved. So here's the puzzle. This is talking about an Eved, every Jewish Eved. I don't want to leave after six years. I love you, it's great being here, right? Because you ask yourself, why in the world would somebody want to be a slave? Well, somebody sells himself for peanuts because they have no, if you, you go over there, you'll see. They have nothing, they have no life. They don't have, they don't have parnasa. They make, uh, I asked the guy, I asked the guy at the gate to our place, how much he earns. He told me the whole thing, how much he earns. I said, and how do you get here? I didn't, I don't see the car. So I walk. You see a lot of people on the highway. They're walking. So why don't you buy a bike? He says, a bike is 3,000 rand, the bike. Now, I don't know, how much is 3,000 rand? No, no, it's only $100. He doesn't have money for a bike. So, so if you're in such a massive day, you have to walk miles every day because you can't even afford. You can't put two, two dollars together. How much is it? 200? 600 shekels. Okay, $200, whatever. You can't, it's wholesale. So mainly understand why a guy like that says, listen, let me just be your Evet. Take care of me. Give me a nice bed. I don't have to live in a hut. Give me some gishmaka food, bus or this, that. And Shema Yisrael, do whatever you need for me. I'll go upon him. So if a Jewish slave says that, 
And what do we learn from this? And this I had, we were just discussing this on Shabbos with uh, Leon Welcher. So uh, shout out to Leon. You're right. The, the Salah is by Evid Ivri that what? Your son in law is right. That the Salah that if you only have one pillow, you give it to your Evid, Evid Ivri. You only, the food that you eat, the Gishmakim food, the chon that you have, you have to give to your Evid Ivri. But that's only in this puzzle. Kik Tayv Imach is talking about Evid Ivri, but not by Evid Knani. You don't have to give him the pillow. You don't have to give him the food. So certainly, so certainly, your own daughter. Uh, where are we? Yeah. So certainly, with your own daughter. You cannot say, work, and I'm not going to be in you. Of course you can't. You can't even do it to, to, to Jewish slaves, and so certainly not to your own daughter. Even according to the man of Amr, that you could tell your slave. That's one man. Not everybody holds like that. But even if you hold, you can tell your slave, work, I'm not going to give you food. But certainly not by a Jew. And certainly, certainly, culture came by, but not by your own daughter. Omer, oh. So now I'm talking about a, a woman who earns more money than it costs to support her. So if it's the father, if the father says, I'm not going to move fairness you. So then the, we're talking about the brothers now. If the brothers say, the brothers never get the hadafa, the father gets hadafa, but the brothers, they don't get this hadafa. Unless, of course, the mefarnas. If the mefarnas, the, the girl, then they get the adafa. If the father is not mefarnas, he gets the adafa without that. The chiddush over here is that the brothers don't. That's what we're trying to say here. Brothers don't get the extra. Omarava. Gavri Rabba Kirav Yosef. You're telling me a, a teret. We're talking about adafa over here. Rav Yosef brings a, a raya and you answer it. La dafa. So I just want a, a couple of examples. Rebar Ber, when people used to come to him and say, Oh, I have a great teret on the Rebbe Kiva Eger's Tzarchi and Gadol, right? Rebbe Kiva Eger is famous for Tzadikai and Gimel Tzarchi and Gadol. So people would come to him and say, Oh, I have a great teret. So the first thing he would tell him is, no, And what did Rebbe Kiva Eger think about your teret? That's one thing. Or, the, the rugged shover, he once, he once went back and forth with this rov. And he loved this rov. He was like so impressed by the rov's kashas, unbelievable kashas. One day the rov asked him a kasha and he, the rugged shover went crazy. How could he ask such a dumb question? This guy's asking me the most beautiful questions and all of a sudden he asked me the dumbest kasha and he's, he's going crazy. And he bumped into the Ar Sameach and the Ar Sameach said, what, what's, what's wrong? He says, listen, this guy's asking me this and he asked me that. And now he asked me this shtus. So the Arsamech said, listen, because it's known, the, the Raghav Shavu never used to learn Achorayim. He only learned Gemara or whatever. So uh, So the Arsamech says, oh, well, every question you mentioned to me is the Rabbi Kiva Eger. The final question that he asked you is his own question. Of course it's shtusim. Fine. Akopanim, so, so that's that. Now that you know that. Omar Rava. Rav Yosem has in Gufa Kashile, sorry. You think he never thought about your answer of Adafa? We just said yes, sir, of Yosef. He had special siyat the Shmaya Rashi brings down. He was able to answer a question after 22 years. Nobody knew the answer, even Rabba. So you're telling me you have one over of Yosef? He didn't have this Adafa. So when we learned the Mishnah, we also had the same question. That what? Right? If you go back to the first words on Daf Mem Beis Omed Aleph, it says that her her salary, and when she finds something, if she... But wait a minute. It, even though she didn't collect it, ask Rav Yosef, what kind of collection is there when you find something? When you find something, you pick it up and you bring it home. You don't go collect it. Collecting is a salary. The guy owes you money, you have to go collect it. The guy owes you money, so he borrows something, you go collect it. 
when you find something, you find a diamond in the street, you don't collect it, it's, a, it's the wrong Lashem. It's unbelievable. Because you think about it, listen to the tarots. Who, who, who is she collecting it from? So obviously this is what the mission is trying to say. It's unbelievable. Rebbe, when he wrote the Mishnah, never meant to say that the, the girl found something, she collected it, it goes to the brothers. He meant to stick it in there as a compass to, to understand what's going on here. It's like a metziah. The Maisiyadayim are like a Metziah, not Maisiyadayim and a Metziah. Maisiyadayim is like a Metziah. Ma Metziyasa Bechayu Avlav. Just like when she finds something, it immediately goes to the father. And Lachem Yisazav La'atzmo. And after he dies, when she finds something, it goes to herself. Af Maisiyadayim Na'ami. That's what Rebbe is trying to say in the Mishnah. When he says Maisiyadayim, that's what Rabbi Yosef was trying to say. The what? He had a kasha. What's this word Metziah doing here in the Mishnah? It doesn't make any sense. You don't, you don't collect the Metziah. And he answers, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. We're reading this Mishnah, da, 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 da. without the Gemara, we wouldn't know it's flying. The word Metziah, that he stuck it in the Mishnah to tell us, that after the father dies, she gets the Maisiyah dying. That's what Metziah means. The whole meaning of the word Metziah. Itmer Nami. Why? And Rashi explains, now I'll throw it in. Rashi explains that when it comes to Maisiyah dying, the father gets it. There are bonon that there shouldn't be any hatred. The father supports, supports, and also she finds something, she's going to keep it. But that Svara says, Rashi, you don't have by the brothers, because the brothers are not supporting her. They're, they're taking money that's not theirs. It's the father's money that's set aside, so to speak, to be Mepharnas, the, 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 the daughters, which is Mishayev in the Ksuba. He already promised his wife he's going to take care of the daughters. So Mela, it's not theirs. There's no Eva. Okay. Itmar Nami Omer Rav Yudomer Rav. What is Rav? And remember this. It's Rav. Rav says the halacha that what? Bas Hanizonis Menachim Mais Yudel Atzmo. Okay. He says that if a daughter receives support from the brothers, she gets to keep her salary. Here, take a look at this chart for a second. In Pasim Mimdalet, it says, Mehem Tiknu Eved Just again, in these charts, they don't bring the whole Pasuk because nobody said Aura, but just in case somebody's thinking, I'm chopping and this, I am, because there's no room. Mehem Tiknu Eved you, you buy a slave from a guy. And then it says, two psukum later, these slaves, you give over, Birusha, you give to your, it's, 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 it's a, no, it's a, it's a chayfet, it's a, it's, it's an, possession. it's a possession, thank you. It's a possession. You own the Evid, and in possession, you give it over in inheritance. Oh, says the Gemara, Oysa Livnechem, Veloi Benoisecha Livnechem. If the Pasim Dalit goes to your sons, not your daughter. You don't have all rights on her. Memeler, Maisu Daim goes to herself. This Pasim comes to exclude a daughter. Maybe what the son doesn't get is our whole sugi of, of Elunarais that. If somebody seduced this girl, there's a, there's a knas, and if somebody did a chabala, all that doesn't go to the sons. In fact, we do have a Tana that says that's exactly what the Pasuk means. No, my Seidaim goes to the brothers. The Pasuk is only saying to exclude a knas. Says the Gemara, I have a kasha just on one of the words here. Chabalais. Somebody did damage to this girl. The Pasuk is saying... The, 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 the son doesn't get it. Why should the son get it? If you chop off a girl's hand or whatever, the father doesn't get any of that money. It goes directly to the girl. And if she's five years old, you put it in a bank account, you wait until she becomes a gdaila. But it's the girls. Om Rav Let's see. Fine. Or is it Bachanino? 
That word Chabala, just to explain it, she saw He he damaged her, even her taking off her arm. There was a real damage. Sometimes there's a damage, there's a scratch. There's a damage. There's a damage that's a, a, a lifelong damage. It's Lamashal in the face. So now her her value went down. If her value went down, that goes to the father. Said this joke a long time ago. I'll say it again. Why not? It's the new guy in the corner. <laughs> the, no, he's going to tell me that he's with us since Eri I don't know. Number 37. You can use that one Yeah, that one. What, which how does it start? Oh, you know. <laughs> 37. 37. Joke 37 right there. No, this, this woman got, got hit by a truck. And the, the cops had to tell the, uh, the husband in a nice way. So they come to him with a picture. Knock on the door and they say, is this your wife? He says, yeah. He says, it seems like uh, she looks like she, 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 she was run over by a truck. He goes, yeah, I know, I know. But Lamaisa, says she's a very, very good cook. <laughs> okay. Shibtzabe for now. What? Half the island didn't get it. They'll get it in 10 minutes. <laughs> okay, sponsored. Uh, you have to help me out on one because I forgot to print it out. By Moshe Horn in honor of Zach, Zach the Rock, Rocklin, and Lenny Lerner, CPA. And by Hudi Newman in honor of Rebelli. Who else? Uh, it's supposed to be able to support Limit Torah and finish Shas. It's chos of being able to support Limit Torah and finish Shas with myself. Okay, Shkoyach. Omer of Zera. Omer of Masno Merav, Vamri Lo Omer of Zero, Omer of Masno Merav. Does anybody see the difference between the two lines? Omer of Zero, Omer of Masno Merav, Vamri Lo Omer of Zero, Omer of Masno Merav. So the difference is one has a Yud, one doesn't have. One says Omer Rav Zero, and the other says Omer Rebbe Zero. Says Rashi, the identical person, same person. But one of them, as we mentioned the other day, only in Eretz Yisrael they used to give smicha, not today's smicha. The real smicha from generation to generation. So he, it's a nafkemina when he said it. He said it when he was already a, a musmach in Eretz Yisrael. Or maybe not. Maybe he was when he was still in Bavel. <laughs> Oy, he's right. I don't know why, but yeah. Shkoyach Gary. Or as a and he zoynus min ha'achim maisi yodel la'atzmo. So. Reb Zera says in the name of Rav, like we just said before, also in the name of Rav, if she receives support from the brothers, she receives her own salary. Like we had the positive before, even if the Mepharnas her, she gets to keep her salary. Why are you telling me that Rav said it? It's shokud. Who's shokud? Shokud in English means diligent. So Rashi says, shokud manu, shmuel. So why are you telling me it's Rav? It's shmuel. Now, why is, why is he called shokud? Because he was very careful for everything he said. And the halacha is like him in dine, in mominus. Halacha is like Shmuel. It's very interesting, right? Because the Gemara always told us that Rav was much greater than Shmuel. But when it comes to Mominus, Halacha is like Shmuel. He's Shokot. So why are you telling me in the name of Rav? Or Rav Amar. So the Gemara, Eima Av Shokot Amar. Not only did Rav say it, Rav Golad Dar, but also you should know Shmuel greet him. Omar Mar Baram Eima Ar Ravashi, Hoch Amri Nar Doe. They said in our the halacha is that the Maisi Yodayim, again, who gets the salary? According to Rav Sheshis, the brothers get it. So that's the halacha. Rav Ashi Yom say the Rav, that she gets to keep it. The Hilchasa, say the Rav. Look, even Shmuel, I mean, the halacha is always like Shmuel when it comes to Rav and Shmuel, but okay, the halacha is like Rav and Shmuel that she gets to keep it. Says the official Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Kohen. Fatzlacha with limit atayim parnasa. Hamaoris is bitoy v'gerisha. Irsa v'nitzar melo. Subasa shaloi. Two two stories happen there. First, he made a shidduch for his daughter. She be, she became a arusa. Arusa, we said, is like semi-married. 
And the, the mission is going according to the Manda Omer that says that after engagement, there's a ksuba. You hear, Avi? After engagement, there's a ksuba. It's just engagement. But it's not just engagement. She's like, Aisha Sish, there's a ksuba. And then he divorced her. The father finds another shidduch for her, Ursa, Vinisarmala. She lost her, her husband. Ksubasa shaloi. So both Ksubas are the fathers. What? Two yeah. What do you mean two situations? No, 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 no. Twice. There's a divorce and then there's a Nisarmala. The Gemara is going to talk about the, the, the question the Gemara is why did we say a story that, that either she got divorced twice or she lost two husbands. Why are you saying that she got divorced and then she lost her husband? So the Gemara is going to say that we see from here another halacha that once a, a woman loses two husbands, she's not allowed to get married again. She's a katlanus, according to Rebbe. We had a, we had a machloikis. Rebbe is chazaka two times or three times. Okay. Doesn't matter what the ksuba is. I didn't say, first of all, yes, she's a ksuba. Why not? Yeah, she is. But let's say she isn't. She still gets a ksuba. So... So she get a hundred. So it's still the same halacha. The father gets the ksubas. Says the Gemara. Says the Mishnah. Hisia v'girsha, hisia v'nisarmelo. But if she got married, she not just engaged, married nisuin, not erusin, and then she got divorced. What happens once she gets married? She she's in her own rishos. And then his Sia, she got divorced, and then he married her off. Well, now it's not so much he married her off, but it, maybe he helped her get married. Vinisarmala, because he's no longer, he can't marry her off if she doesn't want anymore. Vinisarmala, in the second case, she got her husband, she lost her husband. Ksubasa Shela, both of the Ksubas are hers. Okay? Why? Because we go by when she demands the ksuba. It's, it's a good child here. She got engaged. When she got engaged, she's still in her father's rishos, domain. And then, but even the second, we said even the first ksuba is hers. I'm saying, I'm talking about the first ksuba. Why is the first ksuba hers? Because when does she demand the ksuba? When, her, when she gets divorced. By that time, she's already in her own domain because she's already married. But perhaps not. Perhaps the chi of the guy obligated himself to give her a ksuba when, he was, when she was still in the husband's domain, in, in the father's domain. So that's a little bit of a shayla here. Rabbi Da'imer, Rishayna Shalav, the first ksuba goes to the father. But wait a minute. Once he married her off, and she got divorced after she got married, obviously, so she was no longer in the father's domain. Says the Gemara, time of the Yisiyah, the Gershah Yisiyah, and the Sarmala. Interesting, Lashon in the Mishnah, first it talks about that she got married, she that she got married, and then she got divorced. Then she got married the second time, and she became an almana. Why the difference? Why Gerushin and almana? We see another thing here. She can't get married after two times. It's interesting. Who's the Tana that wrote this? Rebbe himself. Okay, so Rebbe himself told us that Allah is like himself. Famous machlokes in the shatz. We all know chazok is three times, but Rebbe is of the opinion that chazok is after two times. And if two two husbands die, she gets a name of a katlanis. She's a killer. She's a husband. What do they call in English? Black widow. Widow maker. Fine. Something like that. Shaila in the Rishonim. What if the husband kills his wives? He's a wife. He's a wife killer. So the the the, the Rosh says, and then Sugi in, in, in Yivamas, based on the Yivamas, remember, what's the reason why a Katlanis can't get married after two or three husbands? Either because Mazal Goram, it's her bad Mazal, or Mayon Goram, it's her body. She has something in her body, that's, but that only applies to a woman, not to a man. This Mayon Goram is, is a woman thing, not a man. Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. 
There's a shayla we also had in in in, uh, in Yivamis, whether or not there's a katlanus from Erosin. Remember, that's such a shayla. But the Gemara is talking about the Gemara says it straight out from the second case, which is Nisuin over there for sure. We have katlanus. The question is how many times katlanus? Okay, Rabbi Yehuda Oimer is showing the My time with Rabbi Yehuda. What's the logic in Rabbi Yehuda that the first ksuba goes to the father even though she's already married? By the time she got the ksuba and the man's ksuba, she's already married. It's interesting. It's coming together a little bit. We have Rabba. We had yesterday Rabba. He's the Oiker Harem. He's the sharp one. Rav Yosef is Sinai. He knows Kola Kula. Uh, uh, we said over the Maisa and Brachas that the Rav Yosef is only going to be the Rashiva for two years. They were both the Rabbeim of Abaya, we said. Okay, so Rav Yosef is the Rav the Ksuba is already from the time of Eirus and of the engagement. Masiv Ravam. Rabbi Yudah, I'm a Rishon Yishalav. Umoy the Rabbi Yudah, b'ma'ares es bito ikshiktano u'bogro. Rabbi Yudah admits when he, he, he has his daughter engaged. When she's a Ktano, and she became a Begeres, Nises, and then she gets married, she ain't Shuzba. Why doesn't her father have anything to do? What happened? He, she was already engaged when she was a Ktano. When she's a Ktano, the father has full, she's in his Rishos, she's in his domain. So shouldn't, according to what you're telling me, the father should have the Ksuba. You're right. It doesn't go by engagement. It goes by the time of writing the ksuba. And typically, like in our days, when do we write ksubas for Boy Sai? Right be- by the chuppah, right before the nesuin. In those days also, they wouldn't write the ksuba. Yes, Erosin is like uh, half a marriage or something. It's very strong, Eishasish. But they wouldn't write the ksuba then. It goes by the, by the ksiva, not by the Erosin. Says the Gemara, if that's the true, if that's true, that the father is Zoycha in the Ksuba from the time it's written, but not the time of Erosin, Umigba Me'imas Gavio. So when exactly does this girl get to demand her Ksuba from one point? So look over here at the chart for a second, chart six. Let's say Aleph Adar is, well, we'll use the chart later. Okay, hold on a second. Maybe it's Govya. Omer Avhuno, Mona, Mosaim, whether it's the Ksuba of a Mona or a Mosaim, Mina Erison. So what happens is you have a Ksuba, the, 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 the husband is giving collateral, his Nechasim Shubadim, he has real estate, Nechasim Shubadim. So from what point does she get these, the real estate? From the time of the Erison or the time of the writing of the Ksuba? Manu Musayim in the, 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 the part that Chachamim were Mesakin, the 200, or if she's an Alman 100, goes from the Erison. But the Sefes, but the added extra that he added is Minasun. Ravasi Omar. So the Shaila is when a, when a person writes a Ksuba later on, is she Michael based on the date? She's saying, okay, you're writing the Ksuba today. Yes, we were engaged for a year, but anything that happened before, I'm Boichel. It goes by the date, or no, it goes by the Erosin. It goes from the end by the Nesun. Even the 200 is from Nesun. Here's the case. In chart number six, Aleph Adar, there's the first Ksuba. 200 regular. Then he goes and he sells his real estate a month later, Aleph Nisan. A month after that, he writes another Ksuba for 300. We have to finish. There's people in the back waiting for Shachris. Well, we started a little late. So give us a, give us a few minutes. We're almost done. So here's the Shiloh. Does it go based on the first Ksuba or the second Ksuba? Big Nafkimina. Because the second Ksuba, she has no collateral. The guy is penniless by the second suba. He, he promises a lot because he has no money. 
If, if she's going to base it on the first ksuba, she has all the real estate to depend on. If she's going to base it on the second ksuba, she has nothing to depend on. So you're probably asking, but doesn't the second ksuba also have 200 in it, which was part of the first ksuba? So the Gemara addresses that. If she's only going to collect 200, let her say, I'm here from other. But if she says, I'm, I, I want 300, she gets zero because he doesn't have any real estate left. But according to you, according to you, she should get the, the basic. You're telling me that the 200 she gets right away from the Erosin. So when was the Erosin? Another. So the basic 200 she should get. Why does she lose all 200, all 300? Well, Tamech says the Gemara, but according to you, she should get, she the two ksubas together. 200 plus 300, she get 500. If you want to divide the ksubas and say there's 200 over here by the Erosin. There's another 100 by, the, by later on, a later date. So add the Rava. If it's, if it's two separate ksubas, put them together and it's 500. Everybody understands she doesn't get 500. Why? Because she's Michael in the first 200. So she says, I'll take the 300 instead of what I had before. Because he didn't write, I'm going to add to the first ksuba. This is what he meant. You have to be a me because if you're going to go by other, you take 200. Hold on, we're not done yet. So we're also, the reason why he's not going because he didn't add those words, I'm going to be Moisif. So therefore, since he didn't add those words, she is Michael everything that happened beforehand. Where Rav Huna, Mashaykin by Rav Huna, the husband is adding on the 200. <clears throat> He's adding on the 200, and since he didn't say those words, Voicephus, he she's Michael, Rabbi Sai, Shkoya for having me back. Have a wonderful day. Shkoya, welcome to all the guests.